So um, the DCD, the district cost differential, basically comes from base student funding and says that in Volusia County we get less than a dollar for every dollar that we're supposed to get funded. And that's what, that's what we mean. Um, and some other school districts are earning a dollar even or even maybe over a dollar. And so my question is, what are you going to do about the district cost differential and balance out educational funding for Volusia County? Very briefly, like um, I support seconds. looking at the DCD and also you need to remember, you know, there are some school districts that receive similar funding to we, that we do and obviously are rated much higher. So I think we need to look beyond just the funding. There is something else that is going on in our county that needs to be looked at. We're losing 97 million dollars out of our school system here in Volusia County. Who's getting it? Some of the richest counties. Palm Beach County gets no negative. They get 277 million dollars. Miami, which I just mentioned, Dade County, doesn't lose any money. They get $323 million. It's not fair. And we've got to look at that and change that formula. Thank you. And I've said that all night. Thank you, everybody, for being um, excitable but genteel at the same time. We're now going to go into the final segment of the debate. Um, Mr. Uh, Bruno, please give us your closing argument. I'm just going to say that I've worked hard here in Volusia County. Um, I don't come out um, just for photo ops. I work hard in Volusia County to solve problems in Volusia County. I have been a consensus builder in Volusia County. We've got 16 municipalities here in Volusia County. I was able to bring all 16 municipalities together. We have the best working relationship today than we've ever had. Being elected the first chairman of Volusia County, I was able to get to, to be elected to the Congress of Regional Leaders at seven Central Florida counties. It's the coalition of 10 school boards and 86 cities. We're all working together to bring jobs here in Volusia County. As far as the rail is concerned, we talk about creation of jobs. That's thousands of jobs just in the construction. Think about, and all the realtors that are here supported SunRail, and the reason why is because of all the transit development around the stations. That is so important to bring more jobs. We also need alternatives to driving on I-4. People that are disabled, people that are disadvantaged, that can't afford a car, people that are seniors that need to travel to, to the Orlando area and to the other parts of the, of the state of Florida. We've got to have that type of transportation, so it's very important. Somebody brought up the issue of the Ocean Center. I'm proud of the Ocean Center because it brings in jobs. It's not supposed to make money, but it's not supposed to lose money. No money goes into the Ocean Center from your property taxes. It's paid through the bed tax. The bed tax is so important for the support of the Ocean Center. The Ocean Center supports all, it's not supposed to make money, it's supposed to support the businesses around it. Because of the Ocean Center, the E-Zone is expanding. The restaurants around the Ocean Center have, are 17% 17, 17 up in, in volume of, of sales, to, sales today. So it is an advantage for the Daytona Beach area and all of Volusia County. We're the fifth largest convention center in the state of Florida, the only one 400 feet from the world's most famous beach, and I'm proud of what we've been able to do with the Ocean Center. tuition and that kind of thing. If you were elected to the state senate, what measures would you do to ensure that we never have a scandal like the American Music Festival ever again? You can't compare the two, to be quite honest with you. Our priority in the state of Florida needs to be education first. 
You can't have good jobs, you can't have a trained workforce without having education. And every time they cut education, K-12 or even secondary education, that affects our workforce. And you've got to have a trained workforce. We have employers, we have uh, employers out there right now that have jobs available, but we don't have the trained workforce. We've got to have our people go back and get retrained for these jobs. Okay, the question I'm trying to get to um, is, I don't know how many people here are familiar with the American Music Festival when it happened, but the idea that money was loaned and then it wasn't paid back, and students ended up having to put the bill would increase tuition, and a lot of cuts were made. Uh, I know that wasn't a direct relation to you, but what I'm asking you is if you get to the Senate, is there anything you can do to ensure that this kind of spending... First of all, that's a local issue. Um, a pre college president lost his job because of it. Right. Um, the, the Board of Trustees have been working to resolve those issues. It's a community issue, and the community needs to work together to resolve those issues. Um, Ms. Hughes, please give us, do you want to respond to that? Well, with regards to the American Musical Festival, yes, that was an absolute travesty, a travesty that uh, people would even get involved with a man with a, a very um, questionable background that caused our, our college to lose over a million dollars and caused the exit of a president. And there was a local group, I believe, including um, Mr. Bruno, that said they would get the money back and did not get the money back. But that's not that's not really the issue. The, it, you know, I'm, I'm sure from this debate tonight, I want to speak to the issue. The contrast between my opponent and myself could not be more clear. I want to get to you closer. Okay. Uh, Mr. Bruno, uh, to be clarified, because I realize that was a legal First of all, that... That is totally unfair. I was asked by the college and I was asked by the mayor um, to be on a task force right. to see if we could get the money back. We worked to do that. And then there was a legal issue. And it was a legal issue. We we worked. Excuse me? We worked. We worked to, to try to get the community back together to, to and it, it's a shame because we lost the London Symphony Orchestra because of it as well. You know, it's a shame is that the, the gentleman who was really the driving force behind all of this, uh, Mr. Bruno, has strongly supported, in fact, he has strongly supported and defended him. Oh, she paused, he said, and he raised her mind. Show me where I've, I've supported him. Okay. Uh, Ms. Hugo. Dorothy, could you please give your three minute closing? I have served the state representative since 2004 and now I'm asking for your vote uh, in State Senate District 8 covering the Lucian area and Lake County. Um, the contrast between Mr. Bruno and I could not be more clear. I am a person that has a track record and will continue to support the policies that let job creators create jobs, get out of the way of business reduce unnecessary regulation and red tape, except for things that, that really help with um, health and safety. My opponent um, has had a history of raising taxes, and we've enumerated all the taxes that have been raised, the policies that have been raised. He is not a person who has really been at the forefront of job creation. So with all of those taxes that he has supported, he also now supports the imposition, temporary imposition of taxes on I-4, I-95, and I-10. I do not support that. I want to do everything possible that will help job creators, that will help our citizens. When so many of our citizens, and all of you sitting out here also, are hurting or having a very, very difficult time, this is not the time to raise taxes. This is not the time to make it more difficult for job creators to create jobs. It is a time for government to get out of the way, institute policies that help business create jobs so that we can all enjoy the quality of life in Florida that we have come to expect and that we all are entitled to. With that, I'm going to ask for your vote on November 6th. Thank you. We're going to do one last round where Mr. Bruno gets a rebuttal and then Dorothy has the last word, and that's it. <laughs> First of all, Volusia County reduced taxes by $75 million since 2006. I said earlier, we have not increased taxes. In fact, we did everything possible to make sure that services paid for themselves. 
That's not raising taxes. That's reducing your property taxes. And that's what we've been able to do here. We are 47th in the state of Florida on, as far as the county's portion of taxes. And, and my opponent knows better. And she keeps saying that I'm responsible for the whole tax bill. Let me just also say, in closing, that you know how many organizations, there's like 17 different organizations supporting me. And you know the reason why? Because they said that they went to Tallahassee and they wanted to have an appointment and wasn't even listened to. They, they didn't even have an opportunity to give their issues to Dorothy Ugal. And they said to me, as long as you have an open door, you, I can make an appointment with you. I can tell you what our issues are, and you'll be fair <coughs> with me. I'm going to support you, and that's the reason why I have all the support that I have. You can't hide out. Yes, Mr. Burke, you're saying that, that lowering taxes, however, are still the second highest in the state. Ask that to the taxpayers who pay them. Uh, with regard to our um, our uh, meeting with people in Tallahassee, I would challenge you to have those people call my office because I guarantee you that is absolutely not true. We meet with thousands of people during a very short 60-day legislative session, not counting the people we meet with in the district, and that could be attested to by so many different people. And with that, once again, vote for someone November 6th who will support job creation, support lower taxes, support your right to enjoy the quality of life in Florida. Vote for the Eagle District. Thank you. I want to give a round of applause to the people on the panel and also to Mrs. Frederick for the uh, candidate. Thank you for the candidate, of course. And one, one quick announcement before we say goodnight, and that is there will be a public candidate debate tomorrow night, Port Orange City Council Chambers, 6 o'clock, three races, city council race, state representative race, and the big one is Nancy Epps and Josh Wagner, the County Council District 2.